Okay. Lord, I thank you for every person that is watching. I pray that, Lord, you grant them understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So if you have been told to express a quadratic equation in vertex form, so you know that the general quadratic equation is given as f of x is equal to a x squared plus bx plus c, right? So you can be told this quadratic equation can also be expressed. So this is the standard form, okay? But it can also be expressed in this form. And this form is what they call the vertex form, okay? The vertex form. So if they ask you, there are two formulas that you can use for this. There is this, and there's also a method that is uh, where you find your edge. But most of the times in your exams, they'll emphasize that using the square method. So for example, you have been asked the question, by completing the square method, express the express f of x, which is f of x, the standard form, into the form of this. So in other ways, they're just saying express the quadratic equation in the standard, in the vertex form. So we know the general form. So now what is the, let's pick out this equation. So we're going to do three examples. For the first one, we'll pick f of x or y. So if they say f of x is equal to x squared minus 6x minus 7. So now by completing the square method, so you know that this a is the value of, is the coefficient of x squared. So you can see here that x squared is 1. So we know that the coefficient here is 1 because we only have x squared, so the coefficient of x squared is one, so in this form. So all we need to do is find our h and find our k. So now since it says by completing the square method, you begin the same way that we're completing the square. And how do you do that? So let, let me just erase this one. How do you do this? Just get your whole equation and equate it to zero, okay? It is the same thing. All right. All right, so what we do is we can get this f of x and say f of x, we say x squared minus 6x minus 7. We can equate this to 0 the same way that we're solving. So this will say x squared minus 6x. We can equate this to 7, then take it back to the standard form. Okay, so having this now, since we have no coefficient here of x to factorize, what we're just going to do is we'll get x, okay, squared then we're going to get, this is minus 6x. So what is half of six? So you get half of six, of which we have six over, uh, we have six, right? So half of six is this, so this is same as over one, and this is three, right? So it means we're going to have half of six is simply three. So we're going to say, we're going to add it to both sides. So we'll say plus three, then you square it, right? So it's going to be three x, then this will be equal to seven. Then we're going to get, Okay, so we get the half, which is three. So we're going to add it to both sides. So we added this side and also add it to this side. So we're going to say this will be plus the three squared as well. So, but here, okay, I'll talk about that in the next example. So what you're doing here is we're going to say X. Now you can complete the square. So we have, this is the minus sign. So we'll say X, so you open bracket, you say X and you get this sign here to be minus. Then you get this three, open brackets, then you say squared, then this will be got what? This is seven plus nine. So therefore we're going to have X minus three squared. Then you say this will be got two. What is seven? Uh, seven. Uh, so we have nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we're going to have a 16 here. So therefore our in vertex form, our F of X, so we can just simply bring this 16 to this side. We take it back to where it was. We're going to say this is equal to, this is x minus three squared. And this 16 coming back will be minus 16, right? So therefore we're going to have this as x minus three squared minus 16. So this is the vertex form. So you can see our h is this three right here. Okay, then now our K is this 16. And you would have written that in vertex form. So that is how you do it. So let's do another example right here. So now this one is pretty much different, which I believe is the one that you're going to be given. 
So we're going to be given, let's say we have f of x is equal to three x squared. So let me pick this other example here. So let's say we have f of x is equal to, uh, let's say we have f of x is equal to three x squared. Then they give us plus, Okay, let me rewrite our equation. So given f of x is equal to, let's say we have two x squared plus eight x, then we're given minus five. Then we are told to write this in vertex form. So this, we can equate this to zero. Then we can have two x the normal way. So we're going to have two x squared plus eight X. So remember this time we're not getting rid of the A. When we're solving for, when we're solving for X, the first thing you need to do is to factor out. You need to divide both sides, every side by five, by, by these two, right? But this time we're not going to do that since we want to just express it in vertex form. We're not solving for X. So this will be equal to, you take this other one to the other side, it will be five. And what we're going to do is from here, we need to now factor out two because it's going to be our A. So we're going to factor out two, then you open your brackets. This will be x squared, right? Because two into this, you see I was saying two x, we're dividing, right? Two x squared divided by two. These will cancel, remain with x squared. So we're, fact we're factoring out two. So two into x squared, we're getting x squared. Then we're going to say plus two into this one here, we're going to have a four x, right? Then after writing four x, we now need to, okay, let's close then we say this is equal to five. Then we're going to go for two, right? Now we get the half of this, then we uh, add it to both sides. So this will be x squared. Then we're going to say plus four x. Then what you do is get the half of this, which is two, right? Half of four is two, right? So we're going to get this will be equal to two. So we're going to add two to both sides. So we're going to get this two and square it, right? And then we're gonna close there. Now, remember, whatever you do on the left side, you also need to do on the right side. Now, this is the point that is going to end you all the full marks. Right at this point now, we're going to say this is five. Now, what you're going to add here is not only the two, uh, uh, two squared. Look at this. This is in the brackets, right? This, everything that is in the brackets is being multiplied by two, right? So what you're going to add to the other side should be this half multiplied by this two. So what you're going to get is, you can see from here clearly that I've put this in brackets. So this two, we haven't gotten rid of it. It's still there. So this two is having impact on this. So the number that is here, actually, if you are to put this in terms of numbers expanding, you're going to get two X squared plus two times four is eight uh, X, right? We'll get back to this. Then you're going to say two times this is actually this is four because two squared is four, isn't it? Right, two squared is four. So times two, it will be eight. So what you're going to get is, you're not going only to add this. So you get your two half, put it in brackets and multiply it by this two. So you're right now you have gotten everything because this is two times this. Now you're putting it this side. And that is where this vertex form, the secret is. Okay, so all that you need to do is get back, now just solving it. So now we are going to complete the square the normal way, this will be two, then we need to get rid of this four X, so it will be X, then we're going to get this sign here, this is plus, then what are you getting? This is two, and then we're going to square it like this. Is equal to, now this side you just solve normally. So this will be five plus two squared is four, then times two, that is eight, right? So this will now be two, then we're going to have X, like this squared, this will be equal to five plus eight. So therefore this will be equal to two X plus two squared is equal to, what is five plus, um, uh, that's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we're going to get a 13 here. Then we're going to have a vertex form. We just need to bring 13 to the other side. So it will be two X plus two minus 13. This is your vertex form. So therefore in uh, finishing, you're just going to say f of x in vertex form will be equal to two, which is our a, then x plus two minus 13. 
Having done that, you would have expressed it in vertex form. So remember, here is the point. This is the key part of this right here. And especially this side of the equation where you're going to add the two. You know, don't only add the two squared, you add the two squared times this A that is here. Okay. I hope that is fine. So let us do another example. This is which will be the last one, I believe. And I want you to redo this video, redo these examples, just pass through them and, and see the numbers that you're going to get. Okay, so let me get something that uh, you're more likely to be given. So what if we're given y, or f of x, is equal to 3x squared. Now this one, I'll, put it, I'll make sure that it's in the same of fractions, go to 5x minus 7. Okay, so let's get this. By completing the square, we know we can just equate this to 0. So we can say this x squared plus 5x minus seven, oh, equal to positive seven, right? I've taken this other one. If I equated this to zero, I'm taking it to the other side, it becomes positive seven. So the next thing that I do is just get this three, and I open, I factor out the three, open brackets, three into this, that would just be x squared, then three into five, it will just be five over three, right? Five over three x, then I'll close the brackets there, then I'll say this is equal to what? Seven, then I bring in the half, so I get half of this. So half of five over three, you just say five over three times one over two, which is just going to give me what? That's five divided by six. So you get this and you square it, then you add it to both sides. So what we're going to do is three, you open brackets, that will be x squared, right? So it's going to be x squared plus five over three. Then we're going to get this x that was there, right? Then we're going to add five over six, then you square it, both sides, right? So you get this, and then you put this in brackets because everything is in brackets. Then you're going to say this is equal to what? Seven, then here is the key point again that I mentioned that I want you to, this will be your take, your take home, okay? As you practice this, always remember I was emphasizing on this. So we're going to have a seven, then you're going to add plus this same five over six squared, five over six squared, but you're multiplying this by this A that is here because this is three times this. So multiplied by what? Three. So therefore we're going to have a three. You can even use these brackets. That will be X squared plus five over three X, right? Okay, let me just rewrite it using this. Instead of rewriting this, I can just complete the square from here. So by completing the square on the, on the left side, I'm just going to say three, then what is in the brackets will be X. I just get this X. Then I'll say plus the five over six, everything squared like this. Then I'll say this is equal to, then you just solve the right side. So this is seven plus five over six squared, right? So five over six squared, then times three. So all that you remain with now is just to simplify this part and you'll have your answer. So what are we going to do to simplify this part? These are just fractions, right? So what you need to do is we can simplify this. This is three, this is X plus five over six, right? Five over six squared is equal to, that's the same as seven plus five squared is 25 divided by six squared is 36 like this, then everything multiplied by two. So in order for you to solve this part here, we'll just say seven plus 25 times two, right? Uh, this is three, isn't it? This is three. So you can see that three can go into 70. So we can just say 25 over 36. Then I'm multiplying it by three, isn't it? So we can say three there one, three there is 12, right? And when you simplify everything, we're going to find ourselves, let me just erase this. When you find this, okay, let me erase this part so that I can have some space. So all that we need now to find is when you get this three, that will be three. I'm just getting this. This is three X plus five over six, everything squared. Then you're going to say is equal to, if I simplify this now, I'm having seven plus seven plus 25 over 12, right? So this is the same as over one. So this is three X plus five over six. So regardless of whether you have fractions, just solve it the normal way. 
then this should be able to give me positive one zero uh, negative one zero nine, right? If you try to go ahead and solve this, uh, this should give you one zero nine, I think. So, but try to redo it. So this is just fractions, one zero nine divided by divided by twelve. I think this should be the answer that it should give you. Then you just bring this one to the left side. This will be three x plus five over six squared minus 109 divided by 12. If there's any number that can go into, I think two can go into this, right? You can just uh, ensure that you make sure that uh, if two can go into, and uh, two cannot go into either, I think there's no number that can go into both of these. So it means you leave it in there, you leave it right there. So it means this will be our final answer. I hope that was clear and that was okay. We do this video, uh, take a look at them and see how it works. Then please do practice. Uh, that's the only way that you're going to get better. So this is the final answer that we have, unless there's any question or I can call it a class. I'm sorry. Sorry, Bri. Thank you, Lord, for this class. We ask for your understanding and your knowledge. We ask, Father Lord, that whatever has been told up, Father, shall be stuck into our minds, O Lord, that it may apply Jehovah God on our, our exams. Lord, we ask you, King of Glory, to also bless the person that is teaching us. Oh, Lord, may you watch over him, King of Glory. May you watch each and every person that will watch this, this video, oh, Lord. Let them understand. Give them the wisdom and the knowledge, oh, Lord. It is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We'll see you then. Take care. Thank you.